này So we're here on the east side of Berlin and as I speak an S7 I believe or S70 yeah S75 or S7 um, is coming in. So we're at the S-Bahn station um, I will show you the sign if I can find one um, for where we're actually at um, but it's um, Freddy something um, beginning with Freddy uh, so um, I'm not going to pretend I know the pronunciations of these and places that we're going to be visiting in this video um, so just I'll be trying to show the signs of as much as I can so what we're doing in this video is it's as the video title says it's how amazing is Berlin's public transport or is Berlin's public transport amazing question mark that's probably going to be the title I use um, it sounds a bit more catchy so what I'm going to do in this video is there is so much different public transport in Berlin. You've got the S-Bahn, you've got the trams that we've just been on, you've got the underground, the U-Bahn, you've got the regional trains, the express trains, the buses, and much, much more than even I can't remember um, running within the city. All linking up together, all providing lovely frequencies, very, very high frequency services. I mean, you can get to and fro anywhere within the city um, without any hassle and a lot of connection between sort of like this, where the S-Bahn and the tram or the bus and the underground, stuff like that is all possible quite easily and um, without any stress. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to demonstrate some of these connections by making some random connections across the city. So we're going to be going on some random routes, random trains. I've got a few stuff in mind, um, but not much. So we're going to see where we end up in Berlin, have a look around, and I will show you all sorts of different types of the public transport, and we'll just see how amazing the public transport in Berlin actually is. So we'll jump on the next s bahn going in that direction, hopefully in a couple of minutes time, um, and we'll see where we end up. So literally seconds after I finish that clip, the S5 is here. So a new place for me to take off. I have been here um, at quite a bit of time, obviously, as you'll have seen with the other videos. Um, but this is the first time I've jumped off here. A nice modern station. It's just on the outskirts of the main city quarters. But it gets the same treatment that the main stations in the city centre get. Um, so very, very nice, clean and brand new flooring. Um, you've got, usually, in most of these places, you've got random shops and things. I'll show you them later on in the main centre part of Berlin, because the main centre part of Berlin, most of the stations are their own mini shopping centres. But it's really cool.
So as we slowly ascend off the station and our train disappears, it's important to remember that as you could hear in the announcements, face coverings are still mandatory. Um, you'll have seen if you've watched my other videos, if you're from Torridy, do go and check the other videos out that I've recorded earlier this week. Obviously you'll see them a bit more progressive than that. Um, but I am wearing a face covering in all the public transport ones. Um, so do make sure, um, obviously, um, you give them a look if you're from Torridy. So face coverings are a thing. I will be wearing them probably throughout the majority of these videos. Obviously we are going to be transferring between different things. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully it'll still be all right. I haven't been here before, so this is really, really cool. Um, look at this massive station. So this is basically just a massive um, S-bound station. There are the trains on the main line, um, but that's, that station's partly disconnected from this one. Um, so we'll go and get a train later on. We'll probably do a train across the city just to demonstrate what they're like. For now, though, we are going to get back on an S-bound. We're going to jump. We were on the, I believe, the S5 earlier. We're going to be getting on the S3 that's due in about two minutes time and we're going to hopefully make our way um, into the centre. There we are, in one minute's time. So here we are in Alexander Platz. Of course, I was going to visit here. Um, I've visited here a fair bit anyway. Um, it's a nice, again, a nice S Bahn train interchange kind of thing. And as you will notice, well, we're going on one of the trains in a bit. But a lot of them are double deckers. So, but this isn't all that you can get here. If you wander down out of the main Alexander Platz um, interchange bit, and we'll go a bit further down. Um, you can see um, a shopping centre, so there's a lot of shops and things here. There's a bus interchange, um, further down you can jump on the tram, then you can jump on the U-Bahn, so this is your first, if you're coming in from the east, your first major sort of interchange point between all of the different public transport methods. And now after having a nosy around, and yes there is a takeaway fish and chip stand, it's literally about 10 o'clock in the morning, but that's open for business. Um, we are going to make our way down to the U-Bahn. So the U-Bahn involves going down quite a, a fair lot of stairs. Not as many as you would expect with sort of the London Underground, for example. Um, but the U-Bahn um, does go a little bit deep. Although there are times on quite a lot of the lines where the lines do actually sort of go above ground. And they're sometimes even higher um, than the S-Bahn and the tram at points. That I think is pretty cool. So we'll go and find the U-Bahn line that we're wanting. We have the U2 from here, that's perfect, that's the one that we want. And we'll jump on that, see what shows up, hopefully. Something that is of um, sort of decent vintage. Also worth documenting something that has been trialled in parts of the UK, that every single sort of stand possible, especially in the centre, but it does replicate itself um, other parts of the city as well, like busy interchanges. But there is literally um, food outlets at every single like um, inlet retail place there could be. I mean, there's phone repair services. So they do make most, and there's like this one um, is being developed at the moment. They do make most of every single opportunity here. 
to um, sort of include retail outlets, shopping places. That means that when they do get busy at peak time, they must be incredibly successful to also have this nice bear that's dressed up in the map. And eventually this is us. So it's quite weird to climb all the way down to then climb up some stairs to get to our um, S-Bahn. There might be in a quicker route, but on oh, U-Bahn, should I say. There might be in a quicker route, but at least we're here now. So over there is one of the older trams, one of the oldest on the network, and you have to go on one of them, so hoping to get one of them today in this video, but it's not going in the right direction we're heading at the moment. Otherwise, is now it's flashing on that screen. It means that it's about to come around this corner any second. So I know it is a couple minutes late, so I don't know what it could be. Let's have a look. Perfect, and it's one of the ones that I wanted to go on. That do number four nine six. These are some of the oldest, oldest um, subway trains are still using on this line. Here we are, somewhere random, and that was 496. You will recognise these from um, sort of OMSI 2. These were the same style trains I had in OMSI 2. Been wanting to go on one for ages, so I was very, very happy when one showed up. So yeah, this was 496. Hope it makes some moves quite busy, if you notice as well. If you notice as well, in between each carriage, it is segregated like the original London transport ones, like London Underground. Well, if we end up on a newer one um, later on, you will notice that the newer trains, then you can walk all the way through them. That's like the latest thing. They've started doing it with the underground. Um, and they have started doing it here because it's the same kind of people making them. So yes, that was quite cool. And what would be quite nice, and before we go, though, that was on a short U2. It would be nice to try and get one of them at um, Rehuleben, um sort of terminus, because obviously that's the iconic Omsi 2 scene. So now I'm going to have a wander around. I'm going to go into tourist mode and have a little nosy, and then probably see if we can get another mode of transport back. I've got a rough plan as to what I want to do, and I'm also incredibly happy that there's a um, man DL double decker over there. I haven't seen a DL double decker in the city centre, and um, since I arrived, I've only seen the one that we got in the two on the two and eight, the two and eight video. So that is really cool. So we're trying to bust now, and although they aren't all electric, the opportunity to go on an electric Mercedes. Um, can never be turned down. This is 1820. The trial and these in the UK, Transiv at the moment, are trialling them um, around the UK and what have. But this one, for example, in, in Berlin and Germany, they already have quite a lot. There are quite a few over in Hamburg um, when I um, visited recently, although we didn't get a chance to go on one there. So it's quite nice to sample one here. And as I say, the one on trial at the moment in the UK is with Transdiv at the time of recording. Um, who are currently using it um, on the 662 Keith to Bradford service and I've also used it in Harrogate. So this bus hasn't gone that far, it has taken me where I want to be um, but it's not a, a very long route um, so it is turning around I think after about four or five stops of me being on it. Two things to note, um, obviously these newer buses feature a newer seat maquette and it is quite nice, the seats are quite rock hard but I suppose you're not on it for long and on that discussion the USB parts now USB ports have only just started to be introduced by BBG um, on sort of buses and things on the newer vehicles however from what my experience this week sort of summarising it I've noticed that there's very very little point for USB ports 
because at the end of the day um, you're not on a bus for long you're on it for about five ten minutes or so because the trams the u-bahns the s-bahns are a lot quicker overall so it is quite an odd setup really and um, that you have the usb ports and what have but i mean at least at least it is something nice something different but um and, and charges you charges your devices However, at the end of the day, um, if you're only on the bus for about five minutes, the hassle of actually getting USB ports out to use them um, can sometimes be a bit too much. Um, and it just means that there's no point to sort in it. So we're going to have a nosy round. Um, I'm going to have a, this is sort of like the Terry's quarter. So I'm going to take a few photos and things. And I can see some more um, man like Line City DL um, deckers up ahead as well. So I might try and get a photo of them. Now this is one of the massive um, like main stations obviously, Pop Stammer Platz is like a tourist attraction, you can see stars and things, and the Berlin Wall, that's what I've come to have a little look at, um, sort of the memorial side of it. And as you can see, Pop Stammer Platz is one of the big, big stations, you've got the big skyscrapers here as well, so we'll have a little look inside the station shortly. So it turns out we're not going into that big building because the, it's one of the S-Bahn that goes from there and we need a U-Bahn. So the U-Bahn sign in the distance is pointing to the U2, um, I believe, down um, this road here. So we'll go and try and find it and see where it is. Oh, there it is. I can see it inside Potsdamer Platz building. So it would make sense as the station is called Potsdamer Platz. But these are things you want to think of once it's happened. So here we are, Potsdamer Platz U-Bahn, and I could hear some um, train doors closing, so I presume I've just missed one. But as you can see as we go down these stairs, it isn't deep at all. Um, the depth from the surface to the underground here is incredibly shallow, one of the shallowest, I believe, in the world. And that's because these do end up going like between the ground and the surface quite a lot. And they're probably deepest within the main central quarter. So when you go into um, the main city centre bit, it's just it's just east of here because we're, I believe, heading west. Um, it does get a lot deeper because obviously everything has to work with one another. So we'll look and see what we need. So there we go, what's quite perfect is this one's going to you ruler bend. Again, you recognise these from OMSI 2, and this is 1081 and um, side one. Um, but these ones are quite interesting because let's go further back here, that one's quite busy. As these did also feature in the game, these I believe around the late 80s they were introduced. is early 90s with this stock so if you do have only two rather than the first one and you saw the chrono feature like the chronology as it went through to sort of 1992 you will have started to see these units around as these were brand new at that time a very very basic box like structure on them they are basically just long rectangles with seats in and as you can see the seats down here and they have been refurbished since so the seats are, are refurbished so they, they aren't just the original seats from like the late 1980s and these were built at a time that um, finances were sort of running a bit dry but they needed new units so obviously these were the obvious obvious choice thing to do and as you can see as well as i did say earlier um the u-van um, with it being as shallow as it is under the ground does tend to spend quite a lot of time especially this u2 as i've, tried, I've used this quite a lot this week does go above ground quite a lot and um, sort of crisscrossing across the city
and there we go and that's one of the platforms that there's a little bit of a step on so that was a lovely ride on one of the later sort of, we believe late 1980s early 90s stock so managed in this video we've done very very well to get both of the older style trains running around hopefully when we return to the u-bahn i'll be able to show you one of the new ones off as well so we're back at the station that i left off um, just above us so back at the station but we're heading in the other direction so there's going to be a train come from there we've just missed one and whizzing down i think the next one is due in four minutes so we're going to um, get that back into the central quarter we've done um sort of spend down all of that lot before that's why i'm not going there again if i'm trying to do go and check out that video because obviously it's all obviously two related stuff over there what we're going to do um, is we're going to head back into the centre now because I came back up here to check the 2 and 8. Again, that is a separate video. Do go and check that one out at the top. Um, if you haven't already, that will be at the top or if you pull the side bar out, um, that will be there. But for now, we're going to head back into the centre, probably jump on a few buses, get a train in um, and a few other things. We may even end up in Spandau. We'll just have to see what happens. So I don't know what we've got, but this is one of the new um, underground trains I was on about, very, very recently um, delivered. You can walk all the way through them. Obviously, that was two units together, but each unit, you can walk all the way through from one end to the other to find a seat. Obviously, there's more doors, so there isn't as many seats, so that walking ability does come in handy. What I have noticed with some of these boards as well, if you can just see um, the sort of next, like the board counting down, and um, it's ours is due any time. Um, it sort of sometimes that has a wheelchair sign against it sometimes it doesn't so I presume that's linked into if it's one of these new ones that is wheelchair accessible or if it's one of the old ones um, where you're not supposed to bring the wheelchair on but if you can find a space you can usually um, lift it up and put it on anyway so speaking of the board and I know it has been inaccurate at times and this is one such demonstration linking on into this we're pretty much at this point now ticked all three separate um, different units and things. This is the most modern one. So we'll have a little bit of a look when we jump on. As you can see, it's looking very, very nice. You can walk all the way through. You can see one side all the way down to the other side of the unit. It is really, really cool. We've got the proper next stop boards on these rather than just a scroller. And the seats are a little bit more comfortable. They're not, not the best of the best, but sort of with the arch way that's done on them, sort of arching out around your um, body. If you do sit in them properly, then they're a lot more comfortable than the pretty much the bench style seats that are on the other ones.
And here we are. So once again, like many of the major stations, there's all sorts of different shops, literally as you jump off the train. If you jump off the train, you can go straight to get yourself some flowers, or you can go straight to a cafe that's further down here. So to conclude in this video on a basic sort of outlook on public transport in Berlin. Now I've done the other videos um, before, You'll, if you haven't already, do go and check them out of the Traditions Bus 2 and 8, we've had a look at that. We've had a look at other parts of um, transport in Berlin and Hamburg, if you haven't already, do go and check out those videos as they are sort of like looking at um, different sort of German transport systems and things. So if this does interest you, do go and check those videos out. Something else to note, and um, before we do fully conclude this video, is I do apologise that it's a bit shorter than I'd intended. I mean, looking back at the actual all the footage I shot, and it was nearly 30 minutes, um, it's probably not too bad. But I did intend to get a train in one of the double-decker trains. Unfortunately, I didn't manage that on the day that I was filming this. It reached highs about 33, 34 degrees, um, and it was it got that warm. Um, it was a bit too, too warm to go on public transport. So I hope that this footage that I shot... Um, was good and um, good enough and you all enjoyed it. So to summarise, um, what is really impressive at the moment is they have the nine euro tickets. As this was um, filmed in June, July and August, and for each of those months, um, for the entirety of public transport in Germany, it is just nine euros per month. That means you can travel on all the transport in South Hamburg, like we did in Berlin and other places um, around Germany. So it isn't just restricted to the cities, it includes all the regional trains and stuff like that. Even with that, um, there are not the um, public transport sort of prices aren't that bad. And to say how well you can interconnect between a tram, an S-Bahn, a U-Bahn, to get where you need to be in such a short space of time is incredibly impressive. You do kind of forget how big Berlin is, and when you do like we did in this video, where you shoot from one side to the other and back again very, very quickly, so you do kind of forget the entire length of the place, um, because obviously somewhere like London, if you try and get the bus there, it takes forever, and if you get the tube, it can be quite expensive. So with that said, um, it was really, really nice to record um, in Berlin and record the public transport. Um, and I hope that the this video and the other videos that I've recorded have inspired um, some of you to make a trip over there. And hopefully um, inspired some ideas for public transport trips and things like that. Because obviously it was very, very impressive. I cannot emphasise this enough. Very impressive with how much integration between the transport networks were. There's no having to buy a different ticket for different operators. It's all the same sort of government run um, operation everything into works and connects everything's regular so you're not waiting around ages you're literally off a tram on an on a sort of a, a suburban train on an underground train on a bus very very quickly and easily that i think is just amazing and something um that um public transport planners in the uk can take inspiration from so if you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the And More Central YouTube channel for more content like this from the real life bus industry or real life transport industry. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found all of the um, Germany related videos interesting. Again, if you haven't already, do go and check out the ones um, that you haven't because they were all quite fun to record and also sort of different public transport stuffs. Um, and I will see you all in the next video, Mick. Goodbye for now. Bye.